Universities everywhere create traditions for themselves, often based on the influence of a founder or great scholar. The school at the time was dominated by the influence of Sidney and Beatrice Webb, staunch socialists committed to bettering the lot of the poor. Into this new world of design in 1929 came Friedrich Hayek. The guiding ethos of a university doesn't prevent its professors from playing a careful game of chess to achieve their own ends. An economist sympathetic to the classical tradition invited Hayek as a guest lecturer. He proved so popular that he was given a professorial chair and was to stay for 20 years. Many young academics lionized the young Austrian with his forthright views. It was an exciting time for economists. New theories were being developed, many in response to events outside the lecture room. Just yards from the London School of Economics, a van arrives each day with food for the city's down and outs. It's an echo of a site common in the 1930s. Men queuing for work or food. Some people even echo the ideas put forward then to explain it, that it was a failure of capitalism. Through the Great Depression, thousands across the nation were unemployed. For socialists, it was a prediction come true. Capitalism was in decline, they said, paving the way for a socialist future. There was a challenge and a puzzle here for Hayek. Hayek loved England. He was to become a citizen in 1938. The English social and academic climate, as today, lacked the fervor of Germanic culture. The English seemed relaxed, undemonstrative, tolerant. Yet they were stubbornly individualist, suggesting a society steeped in the classical liberal ethos. But in fact, the academic economists of the New Age had turned to ideas quite alien to these traditions. They'd become imbued with notions of central planning. King's College in Cambridge led this change largely through those surrounding the economist John Maynard Keynes. Hayek was to watch those who had absorbed the ideas in his lectures with relish join Keynes's circle. They were attracted by Keynes's ideas to help the nation escape the rigors of the Depression. Central to this was the publication of his general theory of employment. Hayek had reviewed unfavorably some of Keynes's earlier work. Hayek's lectures, published as Prices and Production, were then attacked by Keynes. And so began a long battle between the aristocratic Englishman and the Austrian interloper. December 23, 1931. Dear Hayek, I'm sorry to be so tiresome, but what I really want to get at was the exact significance you attach to effective circulation. December 25th. The total effect of circulation, as I understand it and as I thought you understood it, is simply the total of all money payments affected. That insight I thought you meant is just my difficulty. Keynes was a mechanist. Economists could construct changes in society. Hayek focused on individuals and their psychology. His world was more like a sensitive and ever-changing organism. Keith Underwood is an individual with many talents. Understanding how human beings use their skills and knowledge was to absorb Hayek during the early part of his academic career. In his working life, Keith's an industrialist. Over 20 years, he's learned all about precision alloy casting. 
we've got the jobs we can change like that, but uh, unfortunately we don't get the opportunity. Now we've got the opportunity, we can leave three D things up. He and his brother, Brian, are just two of thousands of producers in any complex economy, and two among millions of consumers. I criticise economists who use the tools of natural science to explain human events. He called this scientism. Science uses methods which are applied to physical objects, the behaviour of which is in general predictable. Engineers act with some certainty that a change in input will lead to a predictable change in output. The tools used are designed for repeatable results. The world we construct with these tools can be designed because we design the rules of the tools. But human beings, said Hayek, are less predictable. We are probably limited to recognizing only broad patterns in what we do, because we don't know the knowledge each individual has. Take teeth. He's technically proficient, useful perhaps in any central plan to develop national technological success. But Keith knows as much about which fly works with which fish as he does about machining components. And what he knows gives him desires and allows him to make choices unknown to any central planner. Keith's partner Rosemary and his daughter Beth do the gardening. Lots of ideas pass from one to the other. As outsiders, we can never know exactly what or when or how much is known. To Hayek, the real world consists of continual change. But how, he asks, does any order emerge out of this chaos of individual knowledge and desire? Okay, bye. Bye. The answer lies in markets. All markets, whether in houses or cars, between nations or on the village green, are merely places where the knowledge and desires of individuals meet. Hayek's key insight is that markets allow the matching of perceived private values as they change through time. At his favourite shop, Keith takes the risk of having his idea of value tested. Peter, the owner, knows what he wants. Keith, not one to be bullied, knows what he wants. One or two of these bigger ones here. Uh huh. I'll tell you what we have got that you yeah. ought to see. Yeah. I know you've got a wax waste. Yeah. But yeah. this, the Rolls Royce of fly fishing jacket, yeah. you really ought to try this on. This was made for you. Tom, put yeah. your coat off and let's have a go. There is, <laughs> says Hyatt, a discovery process at work here. Oh, Guiding Keith and Peter's perceptions yeah. is price. The information system that provides a guide to what we might want measured against what we actually see in the goods. That's very nice. And then loads of pockets for putting everything in. Yeah. Flies, ties, All of it. hooks, weights, everything. For Peter, the price is a guide to Keith's knowledge of what he may actually want. But if it doesn't meet expectations, no cooperation is possible. That's our freedom in free markets. Yeah. And what about the coat then, Keith? No, 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 I'll, I'll come, I'll, I'll think about it. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll think well, about okay. it. Okay, well, I hope I'm right. sold it. Okay. The incentive for any private supplier to find the right price after an unsuccessful sale is the prospect of loss, or the temptation of a profit for success. 